Hey everybody, Mark from KentonTable.com. Um, wanted to talk a little bit today um, about tenting, inflatables, um, vinyl, and how it reacts to the cold weather. Um, you know, it, most of our products, whether they be a bounce house or a party tent, are really designed as a three season. Spring, summer, fall. Um, winter and warmer months, okay? And, you know, tents are our source of income as well as our inflatables. But, you know, even the toughest party tents are not going to fare well in extreme freezing cold weather. Um, you know, Tent and Table has a affiliate uh, rental company as well. And naturally, being in Buffalo, New York, we're always in a situation where we're tenting um, in, in extreme weather, in extreme conditions. Um, though it's not recommended, a lot of times it's just reality if we want to keep our revenue flowing. With that being said, you know, even from a standpoint of pricing, um, we really have to assume that if we're going to be setting up a 20 by 20, 20 by 30, 20 by 40, or larger party tent in sub-zero weather, that there's a very good chance you're going to get some damage to the top of that tent. Um, it's really no way, if you've never experienced it before, especially if you're new to the party rental business, a lot of times you're going to see the dollar signs and you're going to say, I don't care if it's cold. You go out into your warehouse, you pick up that tent, it feels nice and soft and supple, and you're going to go out and set it up. Well, just in the amount of time that that tent is in the back of a truck driving down the road in freezing weather, that vinyl is going to become very brittle. You know, how I, best way to show it is I actually have some pieces of vinyl that are, you know, basically we're in front of a heater. It's nice, it's soft, it's supple. Um, you know, you can kind of hear the rubberiness in it, okay? And taking and setting this up is going to be very, very easy. Now, the other extreme is the back of your truck, okay? And, of course, having snow last night, I can pull some vinyl that I put outside. You can hear it. You can see it. You know, there's, there's just not that same amount of bounce back that I'm going to get out of that. You know, look at the difference between the two. Now, we warmed up here today. It's probably about 32 degrees. Um, most of the time, I'm going to say below 40, you've got to be very careful. But most important, when I'm charging out a winter tent rental, um, I might go double or triple. Um, a lot of times, the customer might be surprised to hear something like that. But I have to figure that there's a good possibility that tent top is going to crack. Um, now, I will say, if I can find it in here, our new vinyl that we're using, our coated vinyl, is going to be a much nicer vinyl to use in the cold weather. It's probably rated half of what the laminates are going to be. but. You know, it's still something that you just have to be very careful, be very cautious. You know, when we're setting up a tent in warm weather, and you're walking around, and you're grabbing that fabric, and you're pulling it down, and you're putting all your straps on, you know, there's flexibility in the top. It sits well on the frame. Um, in the winter, it's very difficult to do that. And one of the most important things in winter weather is making sure that that tent top is tight and it's free of movement. Um, you know, I'll show you some photos of what happens. Okay, these are common customer service issues that we might get this time of year. Okay, these cracks that are developing in the vinyl, it might be a little hard to see on the screen, are going to be either cold crack or wind whip. Okay, here you can see, especially on sidewalls, on the fold of a sidewall, extreme weather, you will get that type of small cracking and perforated holes.
here, here, you can see the light coming through. Um, the fabric still has its base cloth, okay? So it's not a complete hole through the tent, but at the same time, it doesn't look good. Um, that, you know, windows. Windows, ultimately, 95% of the time, are going to crack in severe cold weather. So another thing that I always recommend to a customer, if we have to do tanning in the winter, is use a solid sidewall. Um, although the customer might want to bring light in, you know, be able to see something, make the overall, if it's a restaurant in the winter for a dining experience, they want that window, okay, to look bright and let the light in. But you can see that in a day or two, okay, of cold weather and the wind flexing that vinyl, it's going to crack. So the other thing that I recommend, too, with sidewalls is, you know, this sidewall, and it's hard to see on here, it is not staked down, okay? So no stake here. There would have been a staking point here. So that sidewall was allowed to just flap openly and widely in the wind. Great alternative, if you're going to have a tent set up outside in the winter for a long period of time, is take some three-quarter inch EMT conduit. Um, pick it up at a hardware store or at Home Depot. Run it through the loops in the bottom of your tent, okay? That's going to come in a 10-foot or a 21-foot length, okay? Um, they make couplings for it as well. And then take hook stakes and hold the conduit down into the ground. If you're working on blacktop or concrete, you can zip tie or tie that off to the leg of the tent. But the biggest thing is to make sure that that vinyl does not have the ability to parachute or whip around. Wind whip and cold crack is going to happen in these extreme weathers. So, although we don't want to discourage the tenting this time of year, we want to make sure that we're charging appropriately for it. Um, staking becomes difficult. Um, for, you know, handling those aluminum poles and pipes, you know, you know, now you're going to be wearing warmer gloves. The metal becomes cold. The vinyl is very difficult to work with. And as we all know, most most tents, until you get into some of the larger clear span structures that you might see at a golf tournament, are not snow rated. So you, might, you have to be very careful of even choosing to go out and set up a tent. Tents are not designed for snow load. Um, you're going to get areas of the country right now that, uh, whereas they're not getting snow, they are getting extreme cold. And that's where you really want to make sure you're taking care of the customer. You are um, charging enough, okay? Because, you know, that 20 by 20 tent top may become a winter top for the next several years. I have certain tents in my rental inventory that I don't set up in the summer unless it's for... Uh, a lawn fate or some sort of event that's not looking for a a quality wedding style top because what will happen is the cold cracking in the top is going to be visible in the same type of lines that you saw in the sidewalls so that tent's usually going to be put aside in my warehouse that's going to be a winter tent you know naturally in buffalo here we do some work for the bills and some of the radio stations so we still have that opportunity to get some income and utilization in the winter, okay? But we're doing that with products that we know are already going to be deemed a B or C quality. The best heaters that, that are out there um, are going to be our LB White um, propane style heaters. You know, it's... It, Again, it's common for a lot of people, and we've all been under a tent where we see a, a propane mushroom style heater. Um, those are really designed for outside. They're designed for open patio areas. You know, they are a combustion 
flame. There is, you know, CO2 coming out of those. Um, one of the problems that I have seen with people that choose to use that type of heater inside a tent, especially one that's been set up for a long period of time, is you're going to get mildew growth on the top of the tent. One of the byproducts of propane is going to be water. So is that mushroom heater is um, underneath a tent, you're going to have a lot of moisture collecting on the tent top. And keep in mind, if you have a mushroom heater set up underneath the tent and you have sidewalls on that tent, you are going to have carbon monoxide issues. It's an open flame. Um, if you look at the LB White style heaters that we sell, and those come in a 40,000, 80,000, 170,000, and up to 350,000 BTU, that style of a heater um, is working very similar to the a furnace in your house. There's a traditional heat exchanger inside that unit. The heat exchanger is heated up and warm air is pumped into the tent. The heater's outside the tent, your propane is outside the tent, and only warm air is being pumped into the tent. That is really the only safe way to properly heat a tent. Torpedo heaters, open flame heaters, mushroom heaters, although they're from a, they're at a very attractive price point, can cause a lot of other issues. Damage to the tent top, carbon monoxide inside the tent, you know, um, that, that propane smell that you get, okay, is going to be coming off of that type of a heater. But when you're using a regular event tent heater like the LB Whites that we carry, you're not going to have any of that odor because it's only warm air coming out of the vents. Uh, you know, we're in Buffalo, okay? We know that when we get that light, fluffy snow that doesn't stick to anything, if it snows, that that is most likely going to be blowing right off the tent. Um, the snow that we had last night, I mean, this is good, hard, you know, packing snow, okay? It's very, per square foot, three inches deep, it's very heavy. So, you know, put in the contract that if we're, we, you know, we have to come out, okay, you would charge an hourly charge. Um, it's, it's, it's hard. As I said, tents are made for three seasons. They're made for cold weather with the right uh, heating and preparation. They're not made for snow load. Um, I know in our rental department, and whether it's, whether it is a winter event or spring or summer event, I watch the weather very, very um, intently. Now, this time of year, even before I commit to a rental contract, I'm going to let that customer know that I'm going to watch the weather. And if I find that there's any sort of weather advisory or there is any sort of storm we are going to have the opportunity or the ability to cancel or reschedule that event. I hate doing that because, you know, we don't want to disappoint our customers, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we are tenting safely and efficiently, okay? And there's really no safe way if we've got a blizzard coming to have people underneath the tent. So I'd rather let the customer know up front that, hey, you know, we're in Buffalo, New York. We can go two weeks without having snow. If you've got an event this Saturday and all of a sudden we have a blizzard warning or there's lake effect snow coming, there's a good possibility I'm going to have to call and cancel that tent. Um, there are other times rather than setting up, let's say, a 40 by 60 or a 40 by 80 tent, I might set up multiple smaller tents. And the reason I do that is if there's a storm coming, if something's going to be crazy, it gives me the ability to take down a smaller tent or make modifications to it rather than having to worry about 2,400 square foot of tenting with a lot of snow load on top. But there again, I'm, I'm going to go back to the fact that, you know, most backyard tents, unless you're dealing with a you know, a Losberger clear span that you'll see at the golf tournaments are really not designed for snow load. Um, even some of those engineered clear span products, 
Um, we have a couple of them set up long term in downtown Buffalo near the water. Okay, they've actually taken the pitch that would normally be like this on one of those tents, and they brought the pitch up very, very high so that any snow collecting on it, just gravity is going to shut it off. Okay, well, if you have any other questions, um, give your give your reps a call. And again, I'm not saying to, I don't want to discourage anybody from cold weather tenting. Just keep in mind that you want to charge appropriately because you are going to have more time into it. The labor is going to be greater. You're, you may very well have some damage to your product. But most of the time, the customer anticipates this when they're planning some sort of event in the cold winter months.